The nurse's story, told in this dramatization, is that they were given dirty syringes to use on the children. Some claim they were tortured, raped, and forced to make false confessions. In real life, the case dragged on. Three years ago, the medics were found guilty and sentenced to death. The death sentence was overturned because of unfair proceedings. But last December, in a new trial, they were sentenced to death a second time. Their plight has caused international outcry at a time when Libya's leader, Muammar Gaddafi, has been reaching out to the West. The Gaddafi Foundation, headed by his son, has been pushing a deal where Bulgaria would compensate the victims and their families. Yesterday, it said agreement had been reached with all the interested parties. Details have not yet been released. Today, families of the nurses remained hopeful. They have to negotiate whatever they need and let them free, said Zorta Anakova, mother of one of the nurses. Libya had this AIDS problem long before our nurses arrived there. At the European Parliament, officials are confident the death sentences may yet be overturned. Back in Libya, officials say a final decision will be taken on Monday when the High Judiciary Council meets to confirm, annul or amend the death penalty verdicts. Anne McMillan, CBC News, London. I'll be talking to filmmaker Mickey Grant in a moment. His documentary about this case is called Injection. Take a look. The Minister of Health of Libya in 1997 told the audience that the situation with HIV in this particular hospital in Benghazi started early 1997. The exact timing of Bulgarian nurses' arrival to Libya was February 1998. So all evidence led me to a simple conclusion. There was no physical possibility of the Bulgarian nurses committing such a crime. Mickey Grant joins me now from Dallas. If, if you really believe that, and, and the defense does, if, if there is evidence that the nurses weren't even in Libya when the outbreak started, why are they sitting on death row? Well, it's uh, kind of complicated. Uh, one, if Gaddafi admitted that it was his health care system, uh, it would be a very helpful cause for his overthrow. There's a very strong opposition to his role. Uh, the other aspect is his money. He wants, uh, they want blood money. It's in Arabic, it's called diva. I think we call it extortion. Uh, of the same amount of funds that are being paid to the victims of Lockerbie, which is over $3 billion, they want 10.2 uh, ECU per child, and there's over 435 children with it. Uh, it's it's uh, not uh, uh, just a coincidence that they came up with that figure. The other thing they want is the, uh, which doesn't get on the news that often, is the uh, former Libyan intelligence agent who was tried and convicted for the Pan Am uh, bombing. They want him released and uh, uh, discharged to uh, Libya. So what about then the international pressure when, when the situation presents itself in this manner? Well, uh, as it indicated, uh, the first I read was the Guardian in London this morning uh, indicated that only $50 million had been raised. The uh, uh, new head of the EU has uh, uh, been on a campaign raising money, uh, and they, they didn't get enough money. Uh, I, I have been negative about, uh, uh, in effect, paying this extortion uh, from the start. Uh, but that's the international community, for the most part, has, has gone along with that movement. Take us back to 1998 when this all started. What were the working conditions like in hospitals back then? Well, this was during the trade embargo against Libya. And pretty much, as I learned from the Libyan opposition, uh, anything that was uh, given to Libya uh, by the UN, like, for instance, medical supplies, was uh, either sold on the black market in Libya or it was uh, sold in other countries. So the medical workers had uh, next to no syringes. They were actually buying blood for transfusions on the black market. I mean, this is uh, unbelievably atrocious. Can you, can you tell us exactly what surprised you uh, about the story while you were following it? 
Well, I, I, my, I wasn't negative about Gaddafi, even through the period of time that I uh, eventually went to Libya. I went to Libya with a proposal. I, I was able to find a, a source of funds to help pay for the children's care. And I, I had a presentation, and part of it was to uh, get Gaddafi to take up the cause of safe health care. Well, part of what I wanted to do was uh, shoot interviews with the children and show their plight, interviews with the uh, parents as well, and I wasn't allowed to do that. Um, I uh, uh, made another attempt by going to a hospital in Rome, Bambino Gesu, that was treating the children, and the same thing. I found the only way the parents could be interviewed would be if a Libyan uh, intelligence officer was present for the for the interview. Uh, it started becoming apparent to me that uh, uh, they did not want this type of uh, coverage. Uh, I then started becoming curious why they didn't have medical supplies. One, I wanted to confirm that the nurses had complained about reusing syringes. Uh, they were having to reuse them 50 to 100 times, not just in the hospital in Benghazi. This is across the entire country. That's unbelievable. If you take the yeah, if you take the case in Benghazi, that's over 400 children, multiply it by about 1,000 clinics, and you'd come up with 400,000 uh, HIV cases. I, I don't think it's that high, but maybe maybe it's 100,000. The WHO thinks it's only 3,000. We have 30 seconds left. What hope do you have that on Monday, when the high court hears this case, uh, that the nurses and doctor will be released? Well, we've been through this quite a few times, and there's always tremendous optimism, and then nothing happens. Uh, I believe that Gaddafi might release one of them or two of them. I believe he's going to bleed it for everything he can, and I think his true goal is to get, get you know, $3 billion and to get the uh, terrorist in Scotland released. Mickey, thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you, Zorka. Moving on, a British judge has handed down life sentences to four men convicted.